and welcome to today's video all about Meerkat's adaptations. Now, as we've been discussing this week, meerkats live in the desert. So obviously they are highly adapted to live in such a harsh climate. So let's have a look at some of the coolest things about meerkats. So one of my favorite things about meerkats is that they have three eyelids. So we have got an eyelid at the top and an eyelid at the bottom. And meerkats have these two, but they also have a third eyelid that acts as a windscreen wiper across their eye. So this is called their nictating membrane, and it basically clears their eye of any sand, which obviously is going to be in abundance when they live in a desert. It also is a way of protecting them because it means that they can blink this eyelid across their eye while still being quite wary of predators, as opposed to having to shut their other eyelids. The nictating membrane is slightly translucent in colour. We're going to try and see if we can get some footage of it so that you can see it nice and clearly. Meerkats have also got a slightly waxy skin. So the top part of their um, body has got quite a um, almost dense fur and at the base of this is quite a waxy feel. So if you were to give them a really good scratch, you kind of end up with um, almost like black stuff on your fingers. Now the fur underneath their body is very, very different. It's very thin and their bellies, um, the skin on their bellies is quite dark. So this is really good for them because what it means is that when they sunbathe, they can put this thin fur um, either up to a heat source or up to, um, up to the sun if they want to lie on their backs. And because the fur is so thin and because their bellies are dark, it absorbs the sun's heat very quickly. Meerkats love staying nice and warm and this is a really good way of them doing that, isn't it, Memph? Whereas the fur on the top of their bodies is quite um, almost thick. Um, and this protects them because it stops sand getting too close to their skin. So the thicker fur and the waxy coat on their skin stops the sand from irritating their skin. Now meerkats have also got really cool claws. So as we mentioned, meerkats love digging. They love digging for food and they love digging their tunnels where they would normally live. Now by having front claws that grow three times faster than their back claws, this means that they can dig a lot and if their claws break it's okay because their front claws grow really fast. So their claws are highly adapted to enable them to live in and live in the desert. Meerkats have also got very cool ears. Their ears can close against the side of their head to stop sand going in their ears. So a lot of their adaptations are to stop them from sand irritating their bodies, which is obviously really key for the environment that they live in, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hello. They also have very, very cool eyes. They see almost in tunnel vision. Um, so if you imagine if you're in the car going through a tunnel and you can see the end of the tunnel, that's how meerkats can see. When a meerkat is scared or is threatened, they also have the ability to stick their tail in the air and to make themselves look as big and bushy as possible, to make themselves appear to be bigger than they are. Now this is quite a common adaptation for a lot of animals that um, can be prey animals, is to make themselves look big and scary. Meerkats also have a very good bite, which means that if they are threatened, they can defend themselves with their teeth. Meerkats have also got a very good sense of smell. They use their nose to sniff out all their food, and this is obviously very important in the desert where food is very scarce. So in the wild, meerkats live in very large numbers. The smallest number that they would ever normally live in is three, and this would be a newly established group, that, potentially a group that's been kicked out of their original group, but more commonly they're found in very, very large numbers. There is always a female at the top of the um, group in charge of everyone, and she will also be the only breeding female. She will also have a mate who will be her breeding male, and no other meerkats within this group are allowed to have babies. So this is to ensure that the strongest meerkats are born from the strongest um, parents. So this is another way that they have adapted in order to protect and to have a really strong group. Now, if another meerkat um, was to decide to have babies, or <laughs> if an... sorry about that, one of the meerkats decided to play with the camera. So if another meerkat couple decides that they are going to have children, Typically, the dominant couple um, will um, kill those babies and make that couple look after the dominant couple's babies. So meerkats are quite nasty to each other when they want to be. But this is to ensure that the, uh, the, the group of meerkats stays nice and healthy. 
Now, being in such a large group obviously also helps them to protect themselves because it's safety in numbers. Now, they always make sure that at least one of them is on lookout and gives an alert to anyone else um, if there is any form of danger, for example, a bird or a snake or something much larger than them comes along, then they can all use their bolt holes and run to safety. So safety in numbers is really important for meerkat survival. So I hope you've been enjoying watching this video all about adaptation of meerkats. And I hope you tune in tomorrow to see all about um, the enrichment that they have been enjoying whilst uh, they have been in lockdown. Thanks for watching guys, see you tomorrow.